The LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series at might be the best LEGO Star Wars UCS set. No, scratch that. This might be the best LEGO Star Wars set ever. While there's stiff competition for that title, this is by far the most accurate UCS set to date. And I think by the end of this review, you'll be convinced, as will I, that this is at least a top five LEGO Star Wars set, if not the number one set they've ever made. It is set number 75313 for ages 18 and up, and honestly, pretty aptly 18 and up here, unlike the lightsaber promo that accompanied it. This is for the big boys here. It has 6,785 pieces, which is going to take you quite a while to build, and in the U.S. retails for $8 hundred dollars it ain't cheap it does have nine minifigs though so you do get quite a few figs to pack in with this at, -AT as it is made for minifigs so while you can't really tell that just looking at the external shell you do get a bunch of minifigs in the set so that's a really great thing because it does have a full-fledged interior and perhaps the most accurate interior in the history of any lego star wars set ever this one's pretty crazy fellas and we're in for a wild review we got the proper imperial logo with at, -AT written on the box there star wars logo and then ultimate collector series I really loving the black art here with the nice blue hue behind the walker i purposely avoided spoilers for the unboxing experience of this set so i can give you my first reaction to this thing let's see what's inside this first panel Woo! we got that logo that's actually the same logo that's on the side of the snowtrooper battle pack that's coming out january 1st 2022 pretty cool logo to see on the side of the box there also love the black greebling just classic look for these big lego star wars sets and then oh boy what's inside of here uh it looks like oh man that is so cool see this is what can make lego star wars great and then you have i'm not i'm not even gonna talk about the bad stuff but look you get my point there's the highs and then there's the lows oh <laughs> this is a high Oh boy, this is one of my favorite shots in all of Star Wars, of course. You got the AT-ATs looming in the distance. That's just gorgeous. And it's not even in like HD. It's like a blurry image because that's what the movie kind of is. So yeah, I wonder if there's any imagery on the other side of the boxes. We're gonna have to pull these all out. So on the bottom, there's kind of this snowy imagery to it, which looks nice. Same for the top. And then the other side of the box is exactly the same image, I think, there. So it's not anything different. Each box individually... Oh! Oh, that's cool. It's got the Lego footprints on the bottom of the box. Um, the other side of the box actually has something too, though. It is d dependent on the part. You have a light up here that'll tell you, you know, what number you're on. And then we also have the light. It like highlights the section that this particular box is to be working on. So you can see that each of these boxes will be unique in that way. However, the, the back will continue to be the same there. And then if we look at this one, you'll see it'll highlight the midsection. It also highlights the minifigs that you're supposed to be working on in that section. And then right here we have the head and all of the paneling for that. Very cool way to set this up and organize everything. I mean, props to whoever did all this box work because this is just gorgeous stuff. I can only imagine the instructions will continue to impress. Into box one here, we should find our instruction manual, hopefully, because it was not in the, the rest of the box. Yep, there it is. Or part of it, maybe. Okay, so maybe we are working. This is good. This is good. This means you can actually split the build up, which is something that you definitely want with bigger sets like this, so you can have multiple people build it at once. Yeah. So we have the instruction manual here for the at, -AT. You can see part of the legs there and then the back. And so you could definitely split this build up if you wanted to with different people and have them build different sections. You could really have four people work on this at once. And at this point, it should come as no surprise that with UCS sets on the interior, you do get the nice bit of artwork and the you know text blurbs about the vehicle and the scenery and stuff from the designers and whatnot. So that's pretty cool. And then you just kind of transfer into normal Lego instructions. So let's build it. After a week of on and off building, I have finished the UCS ATAT. -AT. It is so huge. Pictures don't do it justice. I'll bring some stuff in later in the video to compare it size wise so you get an idea maybe of just how large this thing is. But let's talk about the building experience real quick. I actually found the first two boxes to be a lot more engaging than the last two boxes for some reason. And that's opposite to what I normally feel because usually Technic builds and all this intricate stuff doesn't excite me and I find it boring to try and get through. It's a slog. But 
in this build it felt different for me. The advanced techniques used for the legs while certainly over my head were so much fun to put together and see how it worked that I feel like it trumped the hatred for like building a lot of Lego Technic at once. So I really enjoyed that. I think it might be something that other people might not be expecting to enjoy but would end up enjoying during the build process so that's just something to say about the build process but there's no way around it this is almost a 7,000 piece set it's gonna take you a while to build so don't come into this expecting to build it on one day we have three tack on builds that accompany the set we have the e-web blaster in the middle and then we have two speeder bikes for snow troopers and this is all going to be able to fit into the at, -AT so we'll get to that but the speeder bikes are the same that we're going to see in the 2022 snow trooper battle pack so you can gather more of those the e-web blaster however is a different design. Now we got to talk minifigs of which there are nine. Two at, -AT drivers, Luke Skywalker with his pilot outfit, General Veers with dual molded legs. That one is exclusive to this set. We have the Snowtrooper Commander who we've never seen before, also exclusive to this set. And then we have four regular Snowtroopers. I'll show you the underneath here in a second, but essentially Lego made a big deal about not having exclusive minifigs in big expensive sets because it's not affordable and it's unfair to people who can't afford it. And so as of now, these two figures as they stand here are exclusive to this set. They did a lot of virtue signaling with the gunship and they started to follow through with that, but it's yet to be seen if that will happen here with the at, -AT. So just know that these two figs are exclusive and I personally like that. I think you should get a little something extra for your money as a paying customer. That being said, Lego did decide to cheap out a little bit and for an $800 set, it's shocking they wouldn't bother to get this right. Luke Skywalker's gloves are white on Hoth, but here they've given him black hands. It doesn't make any sense that they've gotten this wrong. They are clearly just cheaping out using the same production line of sets that they've been releasing recently where he uses the black gloves instead of the white gloves. So very cool of Lego to cheap out on an $800 set. Just doesn't make any sense. Are most people gonna notice it? Probably not. Does that mean Lego shouldn't get it right? Definitely not. And here's the range of characters using their second faces for Luke Skywalker and General Veers and just with the helmets removed for all of the other characters, just so you know what you're getting. As for the display card, I think they knocked it out of the park. You've got a very beautiful blue at, -AT in the background. You've got the name on the top and then you've got the manufacturer, height, maximum speed, weapons, and capacity. And shockingly enough, this set is practically minifig scale and so you can fit all of those characters bar the one metric ton of cargo into this at, -AT. so that's pretty crazy but the stand also does have some skeletons in the closet if you will if you're against this sort of thing i guess it has the screwdriver hidden behind it so it's not just the stand it also serves as like a holder for your screwdriver there was a big compromise that LEGO had to come to with this UCS at, -AT. You see, for the motorized one in 2007, the legs couldn't even move. For all other playset versions, you can just move the legs on your own by hand. But for this particular set, you need the handy dandy screwdriver. And if you don't keep it between your ear and your head, are you a real fan? There's two different joints that you can move on each leg for posability. So all you have to do is take your screwdriver and place it onto that Technic piece and then just start spinning. And you'll see the legs start to rotate and move. And the Lego instructions do come with a guideline as to how far or how you should set the legs. And I find it interesting because even on the ones that they say not to do, it looks like it's standing just fine. So shouldn't you be able to do those anyway? It also says in the instruction manual not to pick the model up by the legs, but personally I found that to be my best way to pick it up. It just feels good to me. It definitely says not to though. What it does say is to pick it up by the underbelly. And when you pick it up like this, it's actually not half bad either. It just feels a little unbalanced to me and I'm not a fan of it. So I personally just like grabbing opposite legs like this and lifting away. There's probably something bad for the gears in doing so though, so I really shouldn't be. So pretty understandably, there are a lot of questions about the stability of this model. How stable is it? Well, let's just give it a little push and see. As you can see, it can take a little push. I wouldn't want to push it much harder than this myself for a risk of breaking it in the middle of the review. But as far as what you can expect for something so big and so top heavy, it's about as stable as you'd want. It's not too much of a worry that the whole thing's gonna fall down. And certainly uh, part of what they've done with the mechanism for the legs is made sure that the legs themselves aren't gonna crumple on themselves over time because that would definitely be a worry with all of this weight pushing down on it. In fact, you build the bottom section completely on its own first before you 
connect the top section with some Technic here. And essentially, I really wanted to sit on it myself to see if it could take my weight. And for reference, I weigh about 180 pounds. I really thought about it, but I also didn't want to delay my build process any longer, so maybe in the future I'll do something like that. When it comes to the detail of the armor for the ATAT, -AT, this thing is practically spot on. We'll start all the way down at the feet, which are very large, which obviously provide a nice base for the walker to stand on because it's so heavy, you gotta have something strong down at the bottom. But very detailed, and this is again part of the intricate building process that I enjoyed so much. And for those that are wondering, the bottom four parts of the legs, they are all exactly the same. And then on the top part of the legs, these are alternating pairs. But as you can see, they completely armored it up. There is no Technic showing really other than some of the teeth for the gears in there that kind of shows through here, which I think adds a nice look to it. And while the gears don't show through on the actual model, in some of the cross sections of the AT-AT, -AT, this piece looks very similar to what the actual build of an AT-AT -AT would have. Yeah, this is the first time that they've actually gone in and done the inside of the legs. You have an equal uh, size toe on the AT-AT -AT feet, which is something they don't use usually accomplish in the smaller play sets. So pretty cool to see them do such a great job with the legs here. And that's gonna bring us up to the most annoying part of this walker. And there are a few things that I think could contend for this, but by far it's this piece right here. Like if you go to just turn it a little, it falls right off. It is such a weak connection. I know that the idea behind it was so that you could like slightly tilt it a little bit, but I find these to be so annoying that it's not worth having done that. I figure you might as well put a two by two piece there just so it stays straight and then it's actually connected there and it's not gonna fall off. There really is no way around it. The detail on the underside of the ATAT -AT is second to none. You've got the access hatch and you also have the hatch that Luke Skywalker cuts open to throw his thermal detonator into. So it's a pretty insanely detailed underside and was one of the parts of the AT-AT -AT that I was most surprised to see. It's very accurate. Most of the time with undersides, like it will just go with flat and this is definitely an upgrade to that. Luke Skywalker also includes the rope that he shoots up so he can actually connect in right here and you can have him hanging from the ATAT -AT with his thermal detonator ready to throw into that hatch there. Now for the armor higher up on the ATAT -AT, we have a beautiful look. They've used these ingot pieces to give it a bit more depth and it ended up looking really nice. There are some gaps that I would still prefer there not be but we'll get to why those gaps are here in a second because they kind of need to be functionally. You kind of have a ladder looking design on the side which looks really cool. Now according to the cross section there are heavy braces inside of these points here that basically allow the ATAT -AT to be docked into things or whatever, but the Lego version will not be the same. If you try to dock it to anything here, it's just gonna break. The walker's head is truly a marvel, and for the first time ever in Lego Star Wars, they actually have the red correct on the front of the walker. That is something they haven't done before in 20 years, and finally here for the $800, you get the right look. Even when they did printed stickers for ATATs, they didn't get it right. The cannons underneath move opposite of each other so pushing one back pushes the other forward because they're interconnected like that and it looks pretty cool and movie accurate so really like that also nice use of the jet engine piece from lego there and then you have the big weapons on the side that can rotate up and down i've had some issues with these falling off at the slightest touch but it looks like here in this particular use right now it's not but just be warned depending on how you've put it together maybe it might fall off they've truly done a wonderful job getting a lot of the angling proper on the side of the head as well and using some unorthodox techniques to achieve it unfortunately there's still some decently sizable gaps that you can see but i don't think it's anything that i would call a deal breaker on a set like this it's just a necessary evil or the outcome of what you're going to get you'll never get a perfect one-to-one -one tolerance on something like this unfortunately there just always is going to be some gaps and as for the neck area, you can see that if you turn the head left, it's going to appear opening and then it can kind of close off if you turn it back the other way. So it's a very nice neck area. It's a very strong thing altogether. Like this isn't going to be falling off the front of the head of the walker because there's a bunch of Technic pieces in here connecting it. You don't have to worry about that, which is something many people may be worried about. But yeah, uh, don't worry. And lastly, for the external section of this review, we have the rear of the walker, which has quite a bit of depth to it. There are some pieces definitely popping off of this and some people may like that look, some people may not, but obviously it's made to be accurate and ultimately I think that's gonna be the best course of action here for anything in a set like this. So it looks really 
great and I'm really happy with the external look of the AT-18. Those gaps I mentioned earlier will come into play here. As you can see, there's a small clip here and essentially you can pull out on this and then push this all the way up like so and it's gonna sit like that. And with the other side open as well, you have easy access to your staging area for your snow troopers on this bottom level of the walker. It's a pretty cool feature to have to be able to pull open just a part of the side panel instead of having to pull the entire panel off the side at once, which we'll do right now. But it is pretty cool because this is a really soft moving piece. So you'll see as it falls, it moves really slowly. It's not something that's just gonna drop down really hard and break. And for whatever reason, it just has a really satisfying feel to it when you're moving it. A really soft feel like it's got something countering your movement of the piece. Pulling the entire side panel off can be done pretty easily with two hands like this, and you just pull it up and then away. I have had some slight issues with this particular panel just deciding to break when I have it pulled away from the walker. And like essentially for whatever reason, the clips on the side just aren't strong enough or this on the bottom breaks. And you can see I barely picked it up there and it's just falling apart. Maybe I should only be grabbing it by the top. I'm not really sure what's going on there, but practically every time I've touched this, it breaks. Not the greatest look, but that might be the greatest look. So looking to the interior of the at, -AT on the top rear, we have the fuel cells and there's actually an Easter egg inside of here. Lego City uses Octan, and also you might remember it from the Lego movie as their main fuel source. And so the fuel cells inside of the cases here are actually Octan colored and hence Octan powers the UCS at, -AT. It's not something you see without pulling apart a lot of pieces to see it. So I I don't mind it as a fun Easter egg, albeit inaccurate. The level below is where you can place a couple of your Imperial speeder bikes included in the set. And you can also see the first of many stickers inside the build that have the Imperial hallway lights, which look incredible. So placing the speeder bikes in is a breeze. You just kind of slide them in and pop them onto that little piece there so that they don't fall to the side. But yeah, it's a nice storage area and there's actually an equal storage area on the other side. So if you get a couple more from the battle packs, you can fit them on the other side as well and hence the ATAT -AT can carry up to four of these speeder bikes very nice and on to the middle section this lower section we already kind of saw it's basically the staging area and there's plenty of studs for you to place a character down even at an angle like that or you can take your e-web blaster and place it in there as well it's a nice storage area for that you can see some other great sticker detail inside there with more of those imperial hallway lights and a control panel and more of the same on the other side there there's also a huge ladder on the other other side here, which is definitely the way you go from level one to level two. It's pretty cool. I think it's 18 rungs of the ladder there. So it goes from the bottom all the way to the top. In the bottom front section, we actually have the entryway here to go from the midsection of the walker to the head of the walker. It doesn't open, it doesn't do anything, but it is a very accurate looking door to what you would actually see in the at, -AT which is pretty cool. Then we have four chairs on either side on this bottom level with some more Imperial hallway light stickers, which quite frankly look amazing. Amazing. I just love the way those things look. You can see they are on both sides there. And then if we look to the top, there's a ton more chairs and just a lot of room for troops to be held. In total, there are 40 of these sand blue chairs in the set. It's pretty crazy how many characters you can fit in here. And definitely those battle packs for the snow troopers are going to be popular just because some people are going to want to fill up this at, -AT with the snow troopers. So you can hold up to 40 snow troopers in each chairs and you could probably stick in quite a few more on these studs. Now, because the idea of this at, -AT is to have the entire side be pulled away so you can display it opened or closed, just like the cross section of the walker, the head of the at, -AT can do the same thing. So you're gonna wanna pull up on this so that you can pull away with this and you can see this whole side panel of the at, -AT head comes off and again it does the same thing on both sides so you can really pull off both sides if you wanted to but you can lift up this top piece here and get full access to the interior if you really need it so with this head section you can fit both at, -AT drivers in their respective seats and general veers can stand behind them and then there are still some studs for even more troops if you really wanted to place more and you can see the opposite doorway here and this also gives us a slightly better view of some of the technic workings that help strengthen the 
heavy head and make sure that it's not going to be falling off the front of your walker even when you put a lot of force down to try and get one of those minifigs in their seat and then one of the coolest parts of the front here is the control panel and with that control panel you can see hoth and the shield generator there in the distance and of course when it is closed it is right up in front of the atat -AT driver's faces so that they are looking right at it it's pretty crazy cool i don't know it might even be a bit tight there on the front as far as what it's supposed to be but even so this is a pretty incredible build and this is what the full cross section looks like with everything pulled off this isn't how i would choose to display it but it is a pretty neat way to display it if you want to show off all the figures that you've spent all the money to place inside of the walker it's definitely an option and before i get into my final thoughts and whether or not this is worth the 800 dollars price tag there's one more feature i feel like i didn't properly show off and that's that all three panels on top can be removed so you can take this middle one off first because otherwise it's gonna be a bit difficult to take the front and back ones off but yeah these all come off pretty easily they're relatively flimsy but it's not something you really have to worry about with a big set like this it's not like you're gonna be flipping it upside down and they'll be falling off but you can get pretty easy access from the top down into the ATAT's body with the removal of those panels I guess it's also important to note that everything on the interior is pretty sturdy if you're going to put minifigs down you don't have to worry about pushing through to the floor below everything is gonna hold up nicely finally here we have the UCS ATAT -AT next to the $160 play scale ATAT -AT. and I think the difference in price is more than justified here 160 bucks versus $800 in the US and yeah I tried to pose it like I like to pose my play scale ones so you can see the similarity there in the pose but ultimately this UCS one honestly like last summer when I got this I thought it was like the best ATAT -AT Lego I'd ever made and they'll never touch it and all of a sudden you have this and it's really hard to look at this now and think it's good when you have the big ones so that's pretty crazy to me not to say that this is now suddenly a bad model it's still probably the best playscale ATAT -AT lego has ever made but by god do ucs sets sometimes blow playscale models out of the water but uh, this ucs set is kind of missing one thing lego is currently not selling a snow speeder why they didn't include a snow speeder with a little stand in this set is beyond me it fits perfectly between the legs you can have it flying between the legs doing all sorts of things you could have it running the tow cable around on its stand and it only needs to be about this size so it probably would have only cost lego about 10 more dollars to include a snow speeder from their end of production it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why we don't get that in the set seeing as it's not something that's currently available separately and it's not coming anytime soon as far as i'm aware wear it just doesn't make a ton of sense to me it would have been a really nice addition to get a small ucs style snow speeder that matched the style of this atat -AT for the set but they just aren't offering that here not really sure why i think everyone's probably got one of these laying around and you can see that the atat -AT towers over a 501st battle pack box at the end of the day 800 dollars for any lego set is going to make some people scoff there's definitely a subset of people that won't pay over x amount of dollars for a lego set and this definitely is over that amount for a lot of people but for those interested willing and able to pay 800 dollars for a lego star wars set this is definitely one of the best Best money can buy in the likes of the UCS Falcon and the Imperial Star Destroyer you're not going to be disappointed with this set it's going to look incredible on display the minifigs add some value especially getting exclusive veers and exclusive snowtrooper commander that you can't get in any other set is nice but ultimately this thing just towers above the competition for practically any other Lego Star Wars set and if you're a real hardcore Star Wars and Lego Star Wars fan it would definitely be a hard one to pass up given that a UCS ATAT -AT has been something that many fans have desired for decades at this point. It's pretty insane it's taken this long to get it, but it makes sense. It was a set that needed some newer technology as far as the parts go for the stability of this thing because it's so massive and heavy, and I'm so glad it's finally here after all these years, though. So if you plan on picking one up, you can use my affiliate link in the description below. At the end of the day, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 rating. It definitely has a few flaws that I mentioned in the review that I don't love, like the panels that break a lot. Uh, it's a little bit wobbly at times, but that's to be expected with anything of this size i wasn't looking for perfection there and the luke skywalker hands not being white but instead being black that's just plain cheap and lazy there from lego at 800 bucks but still a set worth picking up if you're interested let me know what you guys think about it in the comments section below if you're new to the channel make sure you hit the subscribe button i'll be having more content on this ucs atat -AT soon comparing it to other atats -AT and if you enjoyed the video the like would be great
greatly appreciated. And this is my final 2021 LEGO Star Wars set review, so you can check out every LEGO Star Wars 2021 set with the playlist on the end screen now.